Just one more detail to add here. So if you noticed, you probably do recognize this character. I didn't. I had to look into the history of it. The Signal. I'll let you take a look at this small clip of all the parts that are involved in producing this figure. Now some of these I decided not to use, but I'll give you a rundown of the parts list at the end of the video for each individual figure. In the meantime, take a quick look at the before because the after looks completely different and that's what this video is about, how to get from here to the finished product. Let's get started. Although I have two figures in this episode, I will concentrate on just the key points of the creation of this figure simply because I don't like long videos. And I did have to look into the history of this character, Duke Thomas, the signal, as I knew nothing about him until I saw somebody else's rendition custom figure on this character. Now remember that your version may vary and I found many variations in the comics. These are only two that I found and liked. Let me show you. Now naturally the process to both figures is to take them apart. In this case I used a endless winter Batman torso and a red hood torso and I removed the emblems by heating them up with a hairdryer and then prying it out. Very little glue holding it in. Now the gauntlets on the Green Lantern, which is the figure that I use as a base body for both of them, the gauntlets come off. They're not even glued in there. And that made it really easy to paint, but you do have to paint them gray or primer them to get rid of that green. Now on the boot that I use on the first one that we're working on, that comes from My Hero Academia. It's a taller boot, I had to cut it down. But because I cut it down and then glued it down to the actual boot itself, now that restrains the peg from moving back and forth. But it does peg into the leg. That was more important. So you have to sacrifice one or the other. And I don't like having a gap and I don't like seeing that peg. So I'd rather hide it and lose some articulation in order to have a more aesthetically pleasing figure to look at. So yes, you will have to paint it. So you are gonna have to paint it gray or you're gonna have to use a primer. Now I used a Dremel tool to Dremel out the top to make room for that peg as you just saw in this clip. And then I super glued the boot to the actual sleeve of the boot. And this is what it looks like once it's primered. I actually am using the Vallejo Premium Paints and I made my own gray, my own gray primer. So then I can coat this with four layers of yellow and then we're set. Now there's two different colors of yellow for the signal. One of them is more of a lemon meringue yellow and the other one is more of a banana yellow. But both of them look really good. Now to cut the tops of those boots, you are going to have to use an X-Acto knife and heat it up. It will make the cut that much cleaner and easier instead of a straight cold cut. Here's something to keep in mind if you're working on two figures like this and the colors are similar. Paint anything that is the same color for both figures. In this case, I'm painting the gauntlets and I am painting the shoulder pads that go to both figures. They are coming from the same base body. So at this point, I already have a mix of yellow to go straight onto these parts and I've already coated each one with a gray. Now if you don't coat them in a gray, it's gonna be very difficult to get that bright yellow. If you just paint it on a straight black, it's gonna take a lot of coat to paint and the black will still dominate that yellow. Yellow is one of the more difficult colors to paint. Here's the torso, which already comes in a light gray and here's the leg from the Green Lantern. Now, this is the arm. I used these two parts on both of the bodies. One of them has the shoulders painted, the other does not. Actually, one is painted yellow, one is painted black on the shoulders. Now, on the legs to the first figure, I had to drill in a peg hole to insert a peg. Reason is, I needed something to glue down onto 
when I put the knee pad from the Endless Winter Batman onto the knee. Otherwise, it would not stay there permanently. And I just used a piece of styrene that I fit in there, super glued in, and then attached the knee pad. Now this is our end result after painting all of what is supposed to be yellow. Now there is no clear coat on this, it's just a straight yellow paint from Vallejo Premium. Now that helmet, I had to use a hot blade to cut through it. One, because it's so thick. Two, because I needed to have a clean angled cut as you see at the bottom that it comes to a point. And that is the helmet from Hazmat Batman. So is the belt and the trunks. That's about the only two pieces from that figure. The others are from Green Lantern and Endless Winter Soldier. And then the boots, once again, are from My Hero Academia. Now in the beginning clip, you did see me add this accessory to these batons. Well, those batons are handmade and they have a peg that go through that uh, battering that I cut in half. And the battering comes from Batgirl. I got two Batgirls, so I sacrificed one. Now, this styrene rod that I made, I ended up cutting it in half to attach a, well, I should have attached a wire. Um, in this case, I attached a piece of cord, and then I somewhat painted it yellow. Still not too happy with it. Might still switch it out for a gold wire, but a gold wire is going to be stiff, and it's only going to have one position. It is removable because I've got magnets in it, three millimeter earth magnets, which are not the strongest, but are strong enough to hold a position for a figure like this. And that's really all you need if you're just gonna take some photos or have it on display. So if you may have noticed, it does lose some articulation because these parts really don't fit exactly together especially on the feet with those boots but it still holds a position well enough for photography and some somewhat action poses and yes you can swap out the helmet for the head and have that portrait and these two portraits well they're the same on both figures so yes you can swap out the helmet for either figure Now what's better than one signal? Well, two signals is really that much better. And I really like the way the second one turned out even more. I really like the banana yellow on it or lemon yellow. And that is done with a Tamiya X24, which makes it that much deeper and richer in tone. Let me show you what I did. Now the shoulder discs on figure number two are a bit tricky. You're gonna have to carve them out at an angle and it's gonna be up to you if you want to leave them black or if you want to paint them yellow. 
In my case, I really should have left them black because they're incredibly difficult to fit in there and avoid the paint rub. But if you want to paint them yellow like I did, you can go ahead and do so. You just have to remember that your um, articulation is going to be that much more limited. So if you want to have more articulation, don't use them or cut them down even lower, sanding them down, and then leave them black. Don't paint them yellow. But that's going to be up to you. Now that emblem that you see painted there, that is airbrushed, and then the black is outlined on the actual emblem, and then glued back down. Now getting back to the basics, using the same legs and the same arms, and on this one, I did paint the yellow on the shoulder. However, I did not paint around the peg. Why? Because that's gonna be covered by a shoulder pauldron anyway. You're not gonna see it. Now the gauntlets on the arms, very simple, same as the other. They're easily removable, there's no glue. Paint them in gray or white, whichever primer you have. That way you can get that bright yellow. And then on top of the yellow, for this particular figure, you add a Tamiya X24, a clear yellow. It's an acrylic, but it is a, a solvent-based product. So you will have to let it dry. Now, the boots on this are totally different. They, they're sleeves that I actually had to mold onto the leg. I didn't have these to borrow from another figure. And this was my mistake. I made them too big. And I didn't like it. And so I had to redo it. So this is my mistake for you to avoid. So this is what it looks like when you make the boots incorrectly. Or in this case, I didn't like what I ended up on these boots. The color's great. I do like the way the laces look to an extent, but it's too wide. And I don't like the way the laces look loose. It doesn't look like a tight fit. So I had to redo it. And the other thing, I don't like those ball joints. I'm gonna have to steal the ball joints from Batgirl. Now, as you noticed, because it is the same hands from the same mold, in this case, Green Lantern, that accessory is transferable and it works great for either figure. So in this case, I can actually have different views and looks for the same character. Now let's get back to correcting the boots and I won't make this very long because I've already done the work. I just wanna show you the finished result. I took that epoxy once again, took it off of the, of the leg and I re-sculpted it. And I like the way this looks so much more. The laces are a tight fit. The boot looks that much more comic accurate. I'm going with this one. It's gonna look great once it's painted. Now it took me a while to find out what the back of the suit looks like. I finally found some artwork that shows the back of the figure and it was a lot easier than I thought. It's a simple, straight, triangular design. So I went ahead and masked it out and I airbrushed in the area that needed to be black. I used a thin pinstripe that I cut out of masking tape to make my outline for the yellow. And this is what it turned out to look like. So this is the finished result of that second figure. Now that belt I made from actual pleather and I cut small pieces, glued them together. Of course I made the main base out of a, a one single piece of pleather. And then that buckle, that's a piece of styrene that I just glued into that belt that I made. And then I glued it onto the actual trunks that are from Endless Winter 
Bat, uh, Ender, yeah, Endless Winter Batman. Um, again, the shoulder pauldrons are also from the Endless Winter Batman. And of course, the legs and arms are from the Green Lantern, as well as the portrait. And then that custom made accessory. And as you can see, it is transferable. It looks great. I still think a wire is going to be better. But yes, a wire is going to also have the limits of what you can do with it. Because once you tweak it over and over, you're going to have a lot of little bends and tweaks. Um, yeah, I think I'll just keep the cord. It's going to look just fine. But this is the end result. And the posing on this one is that much more extensive because the ankles are free to move. The arms are free to move. And you can tell that there's any... Uh, paint rub in those shoulders because they're covered by the pauldrons. This I really like. Oh, one more thing. That stripe along the abdomen on the side, that's actually a Superman decal that I had and I cut into strips. I cut off the borders and I tacked those on because it's got an adhesive already on there. So that made it so much easier. It would have been really difficult to paint it. The same with the uh, stripes on the belt. That's also a Superman decal that I cut down. It's got the adhesive on it, so it's very easy to attach it to those different pockets. And this is the end result here. I'm really, really happy with this one. I love the fact that the helmet looks so much better on this neck uh, that it actually fits well into the helmet. It doesn't look like it's floating. On the other one, it's still kind of iffy, but on this one, it looks great. So I hope that you learned something today. I hope that you liked the video. Please remember that the algorithm that drives the YouTube channel is your likes, comments, and of course your subscriptions. I do appreciate those of you that have returned. If this is your first time, I hope to see you again one more time in the next episode. In the meantime, enjoy the rest of the clip and you'll see a before and after. We'll see you next time.